this is like the, the, the last one, but uh, don't be, uh, don't let that get you down because I haven't, I'm not going anywhere. This is kind of my, well, it's an unpaid job. My volunteer gig in uh, amateur radio is, is, you know, for the youth in ham radio. So I'll be around. Um, I just wanted to finalize and conclude and like kind of show off the, uh, the results and the homeworks um, that we had and, and talk about some like, uh, gather some solutions, some real like workable solutions. And of course, throughout the entire um, um, uh, conference or, or whatever we've been doing, the workshop series, I've been collecting uh, all the notes. Uh, you've, you've had the emails from Dan, like the, the follow-up emails. I've been um, writing down all sorts of stuff. And, and right now that is as legible as chicken scratch, but on a, an electronic format. So I'm still working to kind of like develop maybe some sort of report or um, thing <laughs> that other people can use this to see that, you know, little workshop series like this is, are like, these are really, uh, really valuable. Um, so without further ado, I'm just taking a few more like notes real quick so I don't forget some points. Uh, the solutions workshop is now. Uh, so the first uh, week, which was actually, I call it week zero, was b when this, you know, first started is uh, the homework I put out um, was uh, what do you expect to learn from this workshop? And, and I wanted to look back on these and see, you know, if, if I've met your expectations. Um, looking for ideas with leaders to do with kids at school club meetings, mostly just ideas on what would help get folks involved, not worried about not enough people, just reaching the people who might be interested. I'm interested in helping young hams in amateur radio. My daughter is a ham and it would be great for her to have more people her age to talk with. Learn ways to get kids interested in a radio and school system that claims to support STEM, but really does very little in that regard. So helping them out um, support STEM in a better way. And, uh, you know, and then a lot of smaller responses that were just generally to get in, uh, get youth into the hobby. Um, and it was very interesting to see there was a 12 year old in there so it would be interesting to learn what adults think about youth. And, and that's what uh, we talked about in the, the Kids These Days presentation. Um, and, and it was interesting to see the, uh, um, everyone's you know, observations and, and opinions and thoughts about, you know, uh, about young people today, uh, these days. Um, and then uh, this funny one at the bottom, to be honest, I didn't attend the meeting. <laughs> I don't know why it, it came through this, uh, this question, but generally I think I, I did my best. Uh, I ho hopefully um, met uh, most of the these questions through these workshops, and and if not, I have a very open line, so you know I can I can help with that. Uh, if there's specific things, I've really generalized a lot because uh, that's just the nature of the beast of, of my beast. Like you, you, there's since, since there's so many niches and, and facets in ham radio, um, I have to be general. So you know we talk about like schools. I have a little bit of experience in like elementary and middle and high schools, but a lot of experience in college. But I, you know, I, I understand that a lot of people here are teachers and educators uh, and, um, and volunteers and the like, and, and they have a big like portion and they, you guys out there, I need your help to, uh, we all need your help to, to get it better out there. And then other, other parts and places. And also, excuse me, if I sound like I have a lisp, I have like, a, I bit my tongue really bad like yesterday and I'm talking funny I'm, I'm just noticing it so and I'm drinking sparkling water and so that's not helping but oh well um hopefully I'm still legible anyway uh so I had some graphs and this didn't organize itself and it organized in how I arranged the questions but you can clearly see that what our perception us, us uh, section managers here and the like and assistance and whatnot. Um, what uh, um, they think, what we think is, is the biggest problem is competing interests with 82% of the 35 responses um, showing that up. And then followed by equally aging population hams and a lack of mentors and Elmers. So high cost is interesting because just recently, and we haven't talked about this, but the $50 um, entrance fee that's been proposed, basically the entrance entrance fee or the licensing fee through the new FCC fee schedule has come up. So that might be a much bigger, excuse me, a bigger thing. So, and then a lot of these other ones, I think everyone kind of just like clicked on the board of like all these problems that, that Ham Radio has, but it's clear to see like 
yeah, we have to deal with like competing interests. I was talking with somebody um, a few nights ago about how we compete with Fortnite. And, and we mentioned like uh, how, uh, but the 21st century relevancy talk about how ham radio is a game. Like you can, you can make it a game. You, we have contesting, we have uh, radio sport and, and we can also integrate with those technologies to bring like things like matchmaking lobbies that are very like common in, in video gaming to the ham radio world to make it easier just to hop on the air and, 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 uh, and have a contest. Really short informal contest, but a contest nonetheless. Um, it seems to me on that note that a lot of these contests are, are like big championship style events. Like your, your score really counts for something. If you get the highest score, you get like a plaque. And, and I'm talking mainly the big ones like IRA, UHF, CQ Worldwide, NWRLHF, yada, yada, yada. Uh, there are plenty of smaller contests that are like on a weekly basis, but definitely not enough. And, and definitely none that are like ad hoc that you can just get on a radio and be like, all right, I'm going to match up with like five other people on the radio and we're going to have a mini contest and um, turn it into something like uh, Parks in the Air where you all send out a spot and a little, a little contest bubbles up for 30 min minutes just, just out, of, out of thin air. And then, you know, after that, we're done. After, after that, it's done. And then, and then you get a score. And then it doesn't really, doesn't really have to add up to a big championship leaderboard, but it could, you know, that'd be pretty cool. But anyway, um, the one thing I can't help with is, uh, is aging. And, you know, the, the sad fact of, of life is, you know, we all get older. Um, but the, the one thing that I can do to help with that is try to bring more and more young people in through all of these things, through all of these ideas, right? And that's what we're here to do. Okay, um, week one was the talk about the 21st century relevancy or relevance of ham radio. I suggested everyone watch a video from the RSGB about the future and growth of amateur radio from uh, Kamal Singh, uh, who has went on to leave the RSGB. He was Mike Zero, IOV, India Oscar Victor, I think. Uh, but he's moved back to his homeland to focus on um, personal things. Also notice I only had eight responses on the survey. So, so some people failed their homework, <laughs> but at least I got good responses. And, and I think it's, um, uh, uh, indicative of, of kind of the whole crowd, but most people uh, did watch the video and most people do think ham radio is relevant and I kind of expanded on that and I think I didn't put any any of the other the uh, other pie charts in here because they were just like small, but essentially everyone does believe that the IOT, the Internet of Things, not everyone, but most people uh, believe that IOT, it would be beneficial for ham radio to leverage and, and partner with like the IOT industry and the communication systems industry that are leading the charge in like the, the next generation of the revolution of technology um, would be really helpful for ham radio. And, and I don't think anybody would disagree, but to do that, it it's a, would require a very large multi-pronged uh, approach and we would have to be nimble on our, on our feet and have a lot of money and clout and, and, and basically do a lot of, um, I think, you know, uh, uh, joint events similar to FIRST Robotics. And, and we mentioned that as well. Uh, so this is the, what are your ideas for improving ham radio? Um, I had some good ideas here. Uh, kind of generic in, in general, but mostly it was schools. I had schools, college. So schools and college really resound. Um, almost all of these are about schools. We need to integrate younger hams into our groups or we will not survive. Take time to assist new hams, going back to mentorship. Better marketing, which is one of my favorites. Um, I'm not a marketer. I'm an electrical engineer, believe it or not. But uh, I really find a lot of interest in, in like marketing and public uh, publicity and that sort of thing. Um, and focusing on audiences opp opportunity. Um, so, and then I had one response that was just not applicable. <laughs> no ideas here, so that's fine. Um, I think we've come up with a bunch of ideas and, and I already see the chat starting to uh, pop off with uh, uh, some ideas and suggestions, so that's good. And um, then I also went into week two, show me ham radio. And I was really surprised at this. We had 12 responses, again, a lot of fails, but that's fine with seven, over half of you having a YouTube channel. And even though um, only uh, 50, 41% of you, less than half actually created a ham radio video, uh, you are overwhelmingly willing to create one after that. So I'm hoping to see the results of that. <laughs> if you have created a YouTube video 
or if you have a YouTube channel, I recommend or, or highly suggest you share it in the chat so we can uh, see what you have and, and so we can share your, your works, whether they're good, whether they're meh, <laughs> whether you think they're amazing or not. It's, that's what we kind of said um, back then. It doesn't really matter. I read a book uh, last night called YouTube Secrets, and it's really no secret. If you have a passion uh, and an intrinsic interest in, in sharing your hobby, sharing your abilities and skills and, and thoughts and, and experiences, then you can be a YouTuber. Like, it's not that hard. Just turn on a camera and start talking to it or film a, a thing on, on your desk and just start, start doing stuff and post it to YouTube. Somebody will watch it. You might inspire somebody. And that is one of the, I think, best ways to get young people at least a, a, a mild interest in the ham radio. Um, you might not see it immediately, but, and, and you might not see it ever, but uh, even I have this pretty small channel of only about 1,200 or no, 2,000 subscribers now, which is, which is very small in, in the realm of YouTube. Um, and even in the realm of ham radio YouTubers, that's still pretty, pretty, uh, pretty small. Um, but I get emails constantly not really constantly, probably on a monthly basis of saying, hey, I was uh, 12 years old when I subscribed to you in 2010, seems to be the right year, and uh, now I'm your age, and or about your age, and I'm 20, and <laughs> what, how does, yeah, now I'm 22, and yada, 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 so, and, and they got into ham radio, and this sort of thing, and that sort of thing, and, and because of my video on me pointing an antenna into space in the front yard, they were suddenly interested in ham radio or just discovered it because YouTube just shoves those things into the sidebar. Whenever you're watching random things, um, you'll just randomly get a different thing in your, in your sidebar and it might be ham radio sometimes. And that's how, I don't know, I would consider thousands, if not tens of thousands of people uh, have gotten into ham radio through that kind of uh, interface or exposure. Um, but so it's also interesting to see that one of you out there has TikTok. It wasn't me who replied. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and a few other people uh, responded with uh, websites and, and stuff for, for their club. So it's a really good sign. Most of you have some sort of creative outlet or, or anything. So that's really good. And, and I think that's a big help. So, um, and then this is actually the last slide. It's only been 20 minutes and I've been rambling, but uh, uh, I really wanted to get into like a, more of a conversation. So keeping it short. The state of the hobby survey is um, ran by NHRMA, uh, Dustin. And uh, this link here is uh, clickable uh, when you get the um, thing. In fact, if I could, no, I can't. Uh... Oh, I already I killed it. Let me go back to that. Come back. All right. And um, the bottom, what for crying out loud? I wanted to read my mind, but it uh, isn't. This will do. So the state of the hobby survey, this uh, asked the 3,500 people all over the internet, because uh, it was an online survey, what is the issues, biggest issues facing the hobby? And what do you perceive as the biggest issue facing, facing the hobby? And literally in the same way that, uh, you know, our week zero results had back up here with competing interests and the aging populations of hams, it, that um, correlates one-to-one -one with general lack of interest and the operator base aging out. Different uses of words, but I think it's pretty much the same thing. And the orange bar is what's really like, you know, the largest perceived issue. But then the, the um, what do you, I, don't, I have to remember how he, how he did this, but um, that's what you really want to focus on is what do you perceive to be the largest issue? is that orange bar there. And so that was really interesting to me to see this huge survey of the 3,000 people to have like almost the same exact, uh, um, what do you call it? Like <laughs> correlation, I guess, as, uh, as us. So, all right. So that's like all my slides. Wasn't much. I just wanted to go through and review some of the um, uh, answers to the, to the homeworks. And then now we can talk about um, got a lot of stuff in the chat to look at, and if anybody wants to raise their hand and, and bring through comments, basically um, looking at those questions of, you know, how can we deal with the operator base aging out, people getting older, um, and, and bringing more young people into the hobby generically, but also 
focusing on things like how can we make, how can we incentivize or encourage you all, all of our friends, all of our ham friends to be an Elmer uh, or a mentor to the young ham. Um, ideas of getting it into schools, we've talked about that a lot. Um, and I'm sure there's more out there to be, to be said. And while we're, while we're discussing, I'll be smashing it into my keyboard. This is a recorded session, obviously, so it'll also be recorded uh, um, for um, posterity. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to take a drink and rest my bitten tongue for a second. <laughs> and just kind of open it up. And you have to unmute yourself. Chat, someone was mentioning having school club competitions for the kids. Could you uh, mention something about that and how, how hard that is to set up? School club competitions. Well, I'm, well, I'm surprised actually. I don't see him in here, but the uh, creator of uh, the, the school club uh, roundup is, is one thing, but the um, ad hoc kind of club ideas, or actually one of the things I did um, through the, not through the, Collegiate Amateur Radio Initiative, but uh, a similar sort of thing was inter interlacing uh, contests that are going on, like the um, NAQP, with a sub contest, the Collegiate Amateur Radio or Collegiate Championship College uh, contest. So you would operate exactly like you would in NAQP, but your score would go be compared with all of the college entrants. And so that was the one way. And I'm like looking at the, Dennis, you're actually the, the question uh, asker there and your hands raised. So go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, the, my observation was uh, we're at the high school and at, at two middle schools and at the high school level, if I look at all the clubs that are active, you know, computer club or whatever club you want to talk about, they almost all have a competition with other schools mm -hmm. and other school districts. And uh, that's a driving force for them. You know, they have all these competitions. Oh, yeah. You mean like rivalries. Like rivalries, right. And uh, they get announced at every week. The results of their competitions or interactions are announced on the announcements. And, you know, it's a big deal. I mean, it, it kind of drives the kids to do that. And we don't have any of that. I mean, I think there's a, a total of like maybe four or five school clubs in Michigan and they're pretty spread apart. And there's nothing, you know, really organized that they could focus on. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the school club roundup, and that's a really good thing, except it comes in October, like a week after we start our clubs. So there's no chance to really prepare for that until February comes and, you know, stuff like that. Right. And uh, so and I, I understand that that's a big challenge to develop something like that. But I think that's a big piece that's missing that if that were available, it would be helpful. Yeah, and, and what I'm thinking there, and me and Ward Silver in Zero AX um, really thought about this a lot, and we had the same kind of idea of, like, we need to invoke the rivalries. We need to, like, get the, the Big Ten versus SEC versus ACC versus this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and it really, it was really hard to get it to come to fruition. Even though we have a lot of, uh, a lot of college clubs out there, um, it was hard keeping them um, active on contesting because basically the only thing we could – really get them to do was was hf just basic hf contesting and, and just compare scores but there's a whole range of other you know opportunities like design competitions radio design competitions um oscar will inevitably uh, have to talk about his rocketry or high altitude ballooning uh or something like that um and and doing things that integrate ham radio into um engineering things or even uh even things like uh communications um, milestones like the golden packet but for colleges like how far can you send a Wi-Fi signal or something like that so other little sub competitions in the radio space um, would be really interesting but to collect the entire uh, collect the, the same kind of like collegiate rivalries is, is one of the tenants or one of the missions of the collegiate amateur radio initiative uh, which is being run by the Maluzi brothers Tony and Andy and um I was uh, running it for a while, and I still am a Facebook admin, but they've um, generally just been doing like these weekly or I think monthly actually uh, workshops similar to this, but with all the colleges out there. And so I, there might be some stuff going on 
that I'm just not aware about since I've, uh, I almost said retired from college <laughs> since I graduated from college. Uh, so I'd hook up with them and I can give you their info and, and see what they have. Martha here. I'm the section youth coordinator from Georgia. And I'm not so much into the contesting and I don't think most students are. I think one way to get the students pepped up about this is get them involved in your activities. And hopefully your activities include things like public events when a, a, a village has a, a festival of some sort, have a ham radio booth. Invite the students that you're working with to come join you demonstrating the various things that you've hopefully shared with them. Uh, obviously this is not happening during the pandemic, uh, but, and then, follow up with some press. You know, uh, indeed, students and, and especially school administrators thrive on positive publicity involving their students. Write articles, you know, the students from X, Y, and Z were here at this event doing this, that, and the other, and we should, you know, photos, all kinds of good things. Mm -hmm. I'll hush now. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. Um, I, I do know a lot of young people through college were really into contesting, but at the same vein, a lot of them weren't um, because I mentioned a little while ago, it was hard to get them to do like kind of a single concerted thing or think of a single concerted thing or discrete thing that could like end up with being a score and, and be a competition and yada, yada, yada. But there was a whole other group of hams that weren't into contesting, were more into like you know, repeaters, or one of them was more into developing uh, building radios. And then you had a whole bunch of them that did events. So uh, things like the um, 100 mile foot race through the Ozark Mountains, or the rally in the 100 acre wood, or uh, they would do high altitude balloons for the high school and, and elementary school, and, you know, launch teddy bears up into space, etc. Um, so and and we did, uh, we had a lot of outreach with, we paired up with the IEEE uh, section at RALA at Missouri S&T to bring stuff like that to the high school. Cause we would have like this, every semester we'd have a, uh, uh, an assembly for uh, mid we went middle school and high school students trying to recruit them into the university, but also bringing like what cool stuff can we do? And so ballooning was one of those ISS things and satellite things. And we'd actually drive in our robots and stuff. And, and a lot of times W0 triple E had to, had a say in, you know, in it too. And, and was able to publicize, publicize ham radio as a, you know, traditional activity, but also as a, you know, a tool for all of these other, um, other spaces, you know? So I like your, I, I really like your points. The, um, the hard part there is, uh, you know, like we've always said with uh, a lot of schools is, is like the principal doesn't want to deal with it or it's too much money or uh, this, that, and the other thing. And obviously the pandemic is going to throw a damper on that for sure. I'm really interested in seeing what creative people come up with trying to do the same sort of stuff, but with Zoom and with online webinars and that sort of thing. It's probably not going to be the same, but <laughs> maybe it'll be something. I don't know. I have another comment I'd like to make if I could. Sure. Um, well, two comments. One is, if you think about the technology side of things versus the operating side of things, the students, a large majority of them are more interested in the electronics part of it and as opposed to the operating part of it. We have a percentage of the students that do like to operate, but uh, most of them are interested in the electronic side of things, as you mentioned. The other thing, there, have you heard of the Science Olympiad? Yeah. Um, well, I was a mentor for the Science Olympiad the last two years in one of the middle schools, and uh, specifically for the electronics side of things, electricity and electronics. And I was very disappointed to see that there wasn't anything in there relevant to amateur radio. Mm. And this is something that the questions are put together by an IEEE. And if somebody has an in with IEEE and could convince them to incorporate amateur radio somehow into those questions and discussions, uh, it's, it's a built-in way to, established way to make contact with the kids. And if you could get amateur radio into that, I would be tremendous. Yeah, the IEEE is how I met or how I got through um, and I mentored our, 
I really, I don't think I mentored, but I actually developed and, and, and put together some of the same thing, electronics um, sides. And, and of course I put in ham radio uh, in some way, shape or form. I, I didn't put in a ham radio, but I put in a, a transmitting, receiving laser diode system where basically you had to transmit music over, over a certain area, over a distance with a solar panel and a laser diode just so I didn't have to deal with licensing and such. <laughs> but um, a lot of flyers and W0 Triple E like swag and like ham radio and, and a radio, like there was kind of a showcase, if you will, in, in the room um, showing off ham radio. And it was like, it got, it got some interest and a few people like signed up for more information, but uh, it was a good way to like kind of feel, oh, you know, that, that stuff over there is pretty cool. While you're trying to solve a communications problem and on, you know, other electronic stuff. So um, I do think that's a really good idea. I wrote that down and um, I know some people in the Science Olympiad community and obviously the IEEE community. So that would be a really great thing to like incorporate. I love how radio is just so inclusive. If you're an electrical engineer, it's it has every aspect of electronics, a radio um, all the way from, you know, AC, DC, circuitry, you know, basic electronics, all the way up to electromagnetics, which is like the black magic side of things. Uh, there's not much else like it. And this is why it's such a, such a good tool to use. And, and I wish more and more uh, societies, universities, academia would use it as, as such, even, even in the middle school and high school science, you know, area. But, you know, we also have to teach them social studies and uh, English and stuff. So, <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Let's see, I see a Barry, you said the planning group should be gathering resources to enable section youth coordinators to be more effective. Yeah, so actually, um, here's a solutions workshop question for uh, all of you. Uh, the section youth com committee, and I know Martha, or the section youth coordinators, Martha, you're one of them. Um, I don't know if anybody else is, but um, I've been working with a few of the, uh, a few of the SYCs uh, Anthony Luskery is one of them, K8ZT, and um, Grant, W4KEK. Just kind of understanding what is the section youth coordination system, what are they good at, what are they doing, what are their roles, you know, who do they report to, you know, these sorts of things, and what, what can we do to better them? Because they're, that system is a really good distributed means of distributing information and ideas and thoughts and, and, and getting the word out, but also coordinating, like actually liaisoning and coordinating and, and operating uh, some sort of like concerted youth effort or, or campaign or ideas. So uh, Dan, WL7CCO, hands raised, go ahead. Yeah, Sterling, I think Martha's comment got to me some um, for uh, the last a couple of decades of my career, I had the um, pleasure of working with interns uh, for summer appointments that didn't, they were not funded out of my budget, but it was my responsibility to make sure uh, they met their goals and served the park's purposes as well. And I kind of discovered that competition, I recoiled when such a big deal was made about contests as an attraction. Sorry, Dan, you got muted. There you go. Yeah, got muted a couple times. Um, but encouraging them to compete only with themselves and make sure that they learned what they wanted to learn every day when they came to work seemed to elicit a much more, you know, dedicated kind of performance than anything that had anything to do with competition with others. Because I think youth are instinctively shy about that. And if they're overly competitive, it's typically a sign of some issues, I think. Um, so I just thought I'd surface that as uh, there are, uh, amateur radio is all inclusive. And we do, I think, experience a greater selection of the demographics that our nation is comprised of than any other kind of avocation or hobby I can think of, except perhaps the military. Um, and that's a whole different undertaking. 
So I just wanted to make that point clear that I think sometimes people will compete harder with themselves than with against their peers. And they end up being more inclusive and better team players. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's why I, I must like golf so much because it's not really a game about competing with other people. It's about uh, competing with yourself and and a lot of people, even going back to contesting, you know, they're they're more interested in competing versus like the world or their station or their their previous record or anything, and just bettering their skills over time. So I, I hear your point there. Um, that's a that's a good thing to consider considering, because um, because my thoughts are kind of clouded in in the in the eye of like, well, we're competing against Fortnite and. Call of Duty and all of these things, which which are video games against other other players, and so there's this idea that there's competition and so on and so forth. Uh, but not every kid plays video games, so a lot of a lot of young people are are very intrinsically into uh, you know competing with themselves or or learning and, and bettering themselves. You know, nerds like me, <laughs> I guess, because I didn't play too many video games from back in the day. So it's a good point. Hi, Martha here again. Um, one of your words in your last sentence resonates. Nerds. I hope no one takes offense at that. That's facts are facts. Um, the, the kids who are drawn to ham radio, first off, they may not know it until they're exposed to it, but they do tend to be the nerdy ones. I love that. I'm okay with that. Um, I had to explain to our headmaster at one point not everyone's going to go out for track. Not everyone's going to go out for drama. This is a, a hobby and interest that appeals to certain ones, but those to whom it appeals, it really resonates. That's something to encourage. You know, if you find folks who want to compete, go for it. But the, the best thing that our local ham club did with the students that I had at my school, again, they got them involved. If they were doing a presentation at another school, they took students from my school to go help the, the students at another school. Again, when we did festivals, my students were there working side by side with these guys. That is so empowering. And that's going to reach the kids deep down, and you're going to have them for a good amount of time. I, I'm not a contester by any stretch of the imagination. If my kids want to do that, that's fine. When we did the... Um, school club roundup we did it as a show and tell for ham radio we invited anybody in the hall to come on down and play radio for a while you know if we got points yay we didn't do it at the contest we did it as fun you got to figure out where you're going for mm -hmm. i remember in the hallways at, at college we did the same thing in school club roundup because it was it was more of a showcase like get as many people on the air as you can that are, you know, in schools that are younger kids, uh, kids day as well, you know? Um, and we would put our station, we would take our station out of our, our shack, which was like all set up and, and, you know, nice and literally just move it to the hallway right in front of this huge 200 person lecture hall. And we sit in there, they'd have to walk over these cables, you know, trip hazard, but they would hear us doing CW and single sideband. Um, and making contacts casually, had the cables just running out the door and, and had a speaker, not too loud, but loud enough to be like, you know, people would look over and most people are going to be like weirdos, but, you know, some people are going to be like, huh, like, what is this? And even back when I was, I, I recognized this back when I was um, the youth editor for AWRL, a lot of my articles mention like, everyone was trying to get young people, all young people into ham radio, as if like ham radio is the great savior of, of youth or, you know, that every young person in the world can, will, will flock to it if they just heard about it. But, you know, that's simply not true. I agree with you, Martha, where it, like, it, it, it's a certain kind of person that will come to ham radio. And, and it's our duty as, as hams and, and mentors and elmers that we encourage that and, and facilitate uh, you know, making ham radio a great place for them to, you know, learn and, and flourish. Um, and we can try, we can always try things that, that reach out into the um, rest of the world, you know, like gaming and, and, and other sciences and integration with technology and that sort of thing. So that our, our spread is, you know, our, our reach is farther and, and we can grab more people 
more easily. But at the end of the day, what we're grabbing out of those pools are, are the most interested, the most curious, the most nerdy, the most, you know, scientifically uh, literate or, or curious, you know, people uh, who, who just like kind of find the, the resonance, if you will. All right. So you mentioned you got the question that all the section youth coordinators are, are listed on um, the ARRL has individual section websites and, and you'll if you look for where you find your where your section manager is. If your section has a youth coordinator, they're listed there, but a lot of them don't. I think there's about 38 or 28 or 38 uh, section youth coordinators right now. And and uh, so there's a lot a lot needs to be done to fill them out. But Maybe not. And, and we were thinking about like maybe a division sort of youth coordination system um, that kind of like had this like hierarchy, but the, the division directors aren't too into that. The division directors are more into like the execution and operation of ARRL and that sort of thing. And, but the field organization is into the, well, the field organization things um, that isn't like directly, you know, and, and so bringing it up to them, it was, it was kind of, um, a battle like to to say hey can we have like a youth coordinator position in staff or at the director level or or somebody that reports like to the division but they were like nah so there's a lot of power and a lot of a lot of interest seeing um capabilities that the section youth coordination system could bring if we all kind of work together um and that's just my opinion but uh, i don't know how many people are familiar with that i think we need to grow it and and i think that'll be uh, you know, coming up sooner or later, but I'm trying to, I, I'm so spread, spread so thin and, and have so many irons in the fire that I'm trying to keep up with everybody uh, or trying to get, get everybody to keep up with uh, these uh, progressions are, are getting harder. So. Right. I've had just about enough rambling. I think you all have too. So if there's any more questions out there, I think I've, got through most of the chat and I'll give it back to Dan. Okay. Give it back to Dan. <laughs> All right. Give it to Dan and he'll do everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the comments um, and the stuff that's going on in the chat as well. We really need to keep this kind of stuff going, get some new ideas and such. We're working on uh, some new plans coming up. We don't know if it's going to finalize or not, but uh, Sterling and a bunch of guys, other guys are, are really involved with the youth or, uh, and us are trying to get some good things going. So I want you to stay tuned. I'd like for uh, those that have it uh, to join the, the new hands um, group. Now offering Spectrum Mobile. Uh oh. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. <Yeah. laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, uh, we need to keep this stuff going. There's a lots of lots of good experience in here. The comments and Martha's comments and you name it. There's a, just a, a bunch of people in here who got a lot of good experience. Got gut feeling what works and what doesn't. And that's what we need to have out there. We need to get outside the box. One of the problems we got is us. We, we're not teenagers anymore. And we keep thinking how it was when we were a teenager. And we can't get in their minds. We need to get, we need to, them to get in our minds and uh, help us move forward. So we've got to find ways of making that happen. And uh, so stay tuned. Next week, we'll be back with something else. And uh, want you all uh, be a part of it. And we really, really, really do uh, want your comments. Again, join uh, the New Hams uh, uh, deal. There's, that's where a lot of discussions go on. And we need to hear from you. We need to get the input and ideas. Are there any more uh, any more uh, hands to raise or comments to make? Nothing that I can see, but you will be sending this out to the mail list, right, Dan? And there will be links to join the new hams in there? Uh, yes, yes, as usual. Yeah, you. when I send out the video, I always send that thing, join the new hams, so you get another chance there. And please include your name and call sign. Uh, everybody's in there is a name and call sign type of a thing. Um, we're, making it uh, as straightforward as possible. And Oliver's looking at his watch. <laughs> He's my timekeeper. <laughs> so anyway, uh, one more chance here for anybody to say what they got to say or want to say or don't want to say. 
I'll just mention really quick the use of remote uh, amateur radio access. I just thought of a great idea. When we've been going around to schools to set up radios, it's been very difficult to find a place to set up an antenna and a radio, and especially now that we're in the depth of the sunspot cycle, to get But they have remote access sites that have some very, very, very nice equipment that you could hook up to via the internet. And most schools have internet, so you wouldn't have to drag around a transceiver and a radio and an antenna and the whole setup. All you need to do is be able to have the software on the computer to be able to access the remote via internet. And you could do a pretty decent demo with amateur radio that way. For example, uh, talking to France for a French class to be able to give the students a chance to practice their conversational French or Germany or Spain or whatever country you want to try. That's an excellent use of remote amateur radio and it's something we should all consider. Back to next. Okay, thank you. Wes, do you have some comments? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just figured I'd throw a question out there that, that has come to me. Uh, I'm right now in the middle of doing, a, um, I actually had a homeschool group uh, ask me if I would uh, to teach them ham radio. So we've been doing about, you know, a group of maybe 30 people in, in the park, you know, and, and the question I've gotten from a lot of the homeschool moms is, what book should I buy? And I've really been struggling with that one because I find that there's, there's kind of two classifications of, you know, like licensing type books. One of the books, one style of book has just, you know, I'm just going to show you all the answers to the questions and you're just going to memorize them. And I'm kind of looking for something that's not that kind of book because I'm, realistically, I'm thinking that there's a lot of these kids that won't end up with a license, but I would like them to walk away with some, some math or science or some other kind of STEM knowledge, not just the answers to a test that they might not take, you know. So um, I've been kind of excluding the books that just, you know, just go down the list and just try to teach you the questions. The other category of book has, you know, st talks about the concepts and such, but I find that a lot of those books, they tend to assume that one, you're an adult, and two, you have some sort of technical background, you know? So I was just wondering if anybody had any suggestions for, because um, my target audience right now is kind of like middle school, um, you know, that, those, those ages, you know? They asked me, you know, who, who they would, I would allow to, to be in the class. And I basically told them, you know, if they can sit still and they can, they're interested, then I'm willing to give it a shot. So we've got some, you know, uh, I would say eight and above is kind of my range. Uh, I just thought if anybody had any uh, suggestions for materials that I can pass along to the homeschool moms. The Gordon West books. That you okay. Fun stuff. Those are fairly user friendly then? Very user friendly. And okay. he has different age groups of books. So you could get a, a, a set of books for uh, middle school age. Okay. And I'll have to check those out. Uh, I, uh, I wanted to get some recommendations before I actually plunk down any money to go find one, you know, buy it and see what it is, you know, because there's a lot of books out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Put your hand up. Uh, yeah, but uh, Barry nailed it. I was going to say the um, ARRL tech manual, technician's manual. I'm thinking back to now you're talking. Um, but e even more recently, I, and then he said uh, eight years old and up, um, <laughs> made me think, okay, well, maybe not unless mom wants to get involved. Uh, but Gordo's stuff is really good, and he does address different age groups. So thank you, Barry. Uh, Wes, Martha here. I recommend that you do a hybrid of the two goals you're trying to reach. Um, if you look at the no nonsense tech uh, guide right now, the tech guide is a free download. So there's your cost. But I recommend that you mix lessons out of that with some hands on practical uh, applications of what you just talked about. You know, split your session part 
uh, basically forced work part. Let's play with what we just went over. So yeah, so far. Take the best um, of both. So far in our actual sessions, um, we haven't needed a book at all. We haven't, I haven't been teaching out of a book. It's just been, you know, um, in, instruction. And like I have been uh, um, giving them some sort of interactive or hands-on uh, type of uh, activity each week. And that, that I found that's the highlight. They just light up when... Uh, there you go. Um, this uh, yesterday was our, our this week's, uh, we do it on Tuesdays. And uh, yesterday we built a, uh, a gummy bear uh, mechanical wave machine. That was a, a lot of fun. If you've ever, ever checked, you, there's uh, YouTube videos out there of somebody else who's done this kind of thing, but it's, it's kind of fun to kind of illustrate wave, uh, wave yeah. properties. And, and they had a lot of fun with that. Um, so I, I, I'm always looking for any type of groups of people that ha I can kind of pick their brains because like our next section, we're probably talking about modulation and I'm, I'm racking my brains trying to figure out, okay, what can I do that's a hands-on kind of thing that doesn't cost too much, you know, uh, that we could do. So if anybody has any uh, groups or, you know, resources of people that, you know, can kick around these ideas because the more we can share this kind of thing, you know, um, if one, if somebody does it in one area, we can kind of share that and, and use those ideas in other groups around the country, you know. Okay. Cariño, gracias por llamar. Good, Oscar. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Okay. Unmute yourself. All right. Uh, sorry, I got a phone call at the same time. Wes, I like you, what you're doing is perfect because this kind of middle school students that you have to target and impact, this is the way of doing. We have to cover a lot of material related to the uh, incoming into the electronics and the theory. I would still recommend you, uh, and they already said that you have to make it like a hybrid uh, within, within the two books. I will still recommend the ARRL manual, the tech manual, because it's a reference for life. I mean, if they get it, they, they can come back. I have seen that book and, and it is totally different from many years ago. And, and they will come back and read it. And it's like, a, like, like the handbook. For, I mean, you don't want to give the handbook to these kids, but definitely the tech book, it just is a low level entry that it will be a reference book for as they grow up and they will find a lot of answers. The other idea is that you're doing a lot of work and I congratulate you on that, is to show them, and we have to be careful, but they can find a lot of answers in YouTube videos and things like that, that they, they talk about the theory so they can expand. If the students, they get hungry. Today you have all kind of channels on, uh, on, on, on YouTube explaining every theory that you can imagine and they're experts on the field. So that would expand the knowledge and depends on the student. I mean, the student may be disciplined and self-educated, and this is something that you have to train them. And once they are trained, they will, you will see them grow much faster than what you can imagine. So those are my two cents. Thank you and congratulations. Be careful, Be careful of, of feeding them a fire hose. The uh, ARRL handbook, it's a fire hose and those kids can't handle it. Don't scare them off. That I agree, but the tech book stays on the, on the right level. Yeah. Small bits at a time, the fire hose to drown them. Thanks, Martha. That's been one of my, uh, the, one, the one downside is that, you, you know, we talked, you mentioned um, sending them to YouTube to find more information and that's a good resource. The only thing is that uh, I find uh, that Sometimes you'll go out to, um, to learn about a particular co uh, concept and it gets really deep, really fast. You know, uh, let's say you wanna go learn about resonance, right? And so typically about five minutes into the video and you're into mathematical theory and, you know, and it's, it's like now it's beyond what an elementary kid can, can handle mathematically at that level, you know? So, trying to keep those things at, uh, at, that, at that lower level, just or con conceptual, you know. Um, yesterday, I had a kid that was really trying to picture in his head 
what a radio wave looks like, you know, and that was a difficult, that's a difficult thing to really picture, you know, and uh, I, I'll have to keep working with him because, you know, he, um, I don't know if my answers were completely satisfactory for him, but he was trying to figure it out. Um, but he's one of those kids that uh, wants to learn. So I'm pretty sure he'll get it eventually, um, and, you know, as we keep going through this. But it's, it's, been, it's been interesting uh, to, to, to go through this group. Um, but uh, the, the really the hands-on stuff, and I'm really trying to figure out, and I think this is a theme we've been kind of talking about, is trying to figure out what kids think is fun. <laughs> you know, what is fun? To, and obviously fun takes different forms for all different people. Um, but there are certain certain hobbies that have are more popular now and more so other hobbies that have kind of died off the other day, you know, uh, over time. I was talking with my daughter the other day and we were talking about just different people's different hobbies. And I said, there are, there are some people that used to do a lot of stamp collecting and there's still people that do that, but that's one of those hobbies that, you know, the internet has kind of killed off a little bit. And I'm really hoping that, um, we don't become that kind of hobby that, you know, uh, is very niche that we can ad adapt and adjust to become, you know, and it's been interesting to, to, to get some of these kids to understand that, you know, we have them, I look, have them look at their, the cell phone that you, they or their parents have. And it's like, you realize just how many radios you have in your hand there. And they just don't have any clue as to how things work. But, but thanks everybody. This has been really interesting, uh, fascinating topic discussion. Okay, is there anything, anybody else here? I, just, I don't see any hands up. Um, good conversation, good comments. Stay tuned for more to come. And um, I don't hear anything more, we're gonna close her down. Thank you all for coming. And thanks for having me. It's been my pleasure. And thank you, Sterling, specifically. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, Sterling put a lot of work into this. I've been very unfair to him. I've dropped this stuff on him like last minute. I got five minutes to go. I got to come up with something, Sterling. Rick, yeah. please. <laughs> but well, he's it's also my own fault. He's all young. He can do that. We got to take naps. <laughs> All these presentations were literally created like probably 10 minutes before the meeting. So but they're fresh. But, but I bet that we will have Sterling back. Yes. Yep. I won't yep. be gone for long. In fact, okay. I won't be gone at all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everybody. 78s and 88s and whatever. Just everybody, everybody. stay safe and we'll see you next week. 73 all. 73, everybody.